So in review, what you've seen is pretty much what we do during a use inspection. It is by conducting use inspections that we find out how well people follow the law. We are just as interested in helping you to do the right thing as we are in catching you doing something wrong. It is the pesticide program's philosophy that reasonable enforcement of the law will result in a high level of protection for human health and the environment, while also providing for continued availability of pesticides for those people who feel they need to use them. Hopefully what we've described for you today will help you maintain high standards with your work. Always comply with the label when you mix, load, or apply pesticides to ensure your safety, the safety of those around you, and to protect the environment. Now that we've discussed the use inspection, let's take a look at the second type of inspection, the complaint investigation. When NDA receives a complaint of an alleged misuse of the pesticide, they will send out a pesticide inspector in order to investigate the complaint. First, the inspector determines if the complaint is frivolous or outside the scope of the Pesticide Act. If the inspector determines there is credible reason to conduct an investigation, they will collect evidence to determine if a violation of the Pesticide Act has occurred. Hello, I'm Maggie Dunn from the Nebraska Department of Ag. Oh, hi, I'm Rose Willis. Thank you for coming. Sure, can you tell me what happened yesterday? Well, I saw a guy spraying my neighbor's field, and after he left, I noticed my garden plants had died. It was really windy yesterday, and he obviously got too close to my property. Okay, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few photos and a sample of some of your damaged plants. Okay. Then I wanna go talk to your neighbor to find out who he had spraying for him yesterday. Well, good, because somebody has to pay for this damage. Well, thank you for your time, Mrs. Willis, and once I get the results back, I'll be in touch. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Uh -huh. May I help you? Yes, I'm Maggie Dunn with the Nebraska Department of Ag. Are you John Wells? Yes. Mr. Wells, did you have a pesticide application made to your fields yesterday? Yes, I did. I'm responding to a complaint from your neighbor that the pesticide may have drifted onto her property and damaged some of her garden plants. Could you tell me the name of the company that did, that did the work for you? Sure. This is the guy. He's worked for me in the past and always done a really good job. Rose was over here yesterday about this. I told her this wasn't my fault. Her plants just have a disease or something. Well, we're gonna do everything we can to determine that. As for the applicator, did you notice him doing anything out of the ordinary yesterday? No, he didn't seem to be having any problems at all. Okay, well thank you for your time, Mr. Wells, and we will go talk to Mr. Reynolds. Glad to help. Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Hi, I'm Maggie Dunn. I'm an inspector with the Nebraska Department of nice Ag. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. We got a complaint about the application that you made to Mr. Wells' field yesterday. His neighbor claims that the, the pesticide that you applied to his field came over and drifted onto her guard plants and ruined them. Do you have time to talk to me about what you did yesterday? Sure. Here's the record from Mr. Wells' farm. I've worked for him quite a bit and I've never received complaints in the, before. Um, the wind direction and speed were within regulations. Okay, do you happen to have a copy of the label of the pesticide you were using? Oh, I can get that for you. I'd also like to get your side of the story in writing since all we have is the complainants. No problem. Then once we get the label and the lab results back, I might have to visit with you further just in case any other questions come up. Okay, sure, yeah, just let me know if anything else comes up. Okay, great, nice meeting you, Mr. Reynolds. Nice to meet you too, Maggie. Once inspectors have all the available evidence gathered, they summarize their findings in a report and submit it to the Lincoln Office for Case Development and Review. The department tries to determine whether a violation of our law has occurred and whether the evidence that was collected supports the violation. If the department believes that a documented violation has occurred, they will issue an enforcement action to the alleged violator. The enforcement action can range anywhere from an advisory letter to a financial penalty. If the action involves a financial penalty, the alleged violator will be given the opportunity for a hearing. If the applicator is found to be in violation, they can potentially end up paying a penalty which would then be paid 
to state education programs. The next two types of inspections are the dealer records inspection and the applicator records inspection. A dealer records inspection is designed to determine that restricted use pesticides are only sold to individuals certified in the correct category. It's a serious violation to sell restricted use pesticides to individuals not certified or not certified in the correct category. Violations can be issued to both the dealer and the purchaser if they're involved with an illegal sale. For instance, selling a restricted use fumigant to an applicator not certified in the fumigation category is a violation. Additionally, it is a violation to sell a restricted use pesticide to anyone who has previously held a license which is now expired. Hi. Hey, what can I do for you? I actually need some of the Tordon 22K. All right, is that going to be all? Yeah, that'll, that'll actually be it for Can me. I see your pesticide license, please? Oh, sure. There it is right there. Thank you. All right, looks like you've got category seven. Let me just take down some information here. Go right ahead. Dealers are required to maintain records of all sales or distribution of restricted use pesticides for three years. For restricted use sales, dealers must keep a record of the applicator's name and address, the name and the amount of pesticide sold, and the date the pesticide was shipped or received. The dealer must also record the applicator's license number and category to verify the applicator who will be applying the pesticide is properly certified. The final type of inspection we do at the NDA involves an inspector's check of an applicator's pesticide application records. This is done to verify the records have been kept according to the Nebraska regulations and that the pesticides are applied according to the label. Hi there. Are you Cindy from Termites R Us? Yes, I am. I'm the manager here. What can I do for you? My name is Dan Myler. I'm an inspector with the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. I'm here to perform a routine pesticide applicator's records inspection. I'll need to see your company's records for applications made over the last three years. Okay, well, we actually do keep very detailed records here, and um, I have them right here. Okay, thank you. For commercial pesticide applicators, record keeping is required for all RUP applications. Commercial applicators may also hold RUP records on behalf of a farmer under written agreement. In the structural category, records are required for both GUPs as well as RUPs. A good rule of thumb is to keep records on all applications. This will help protect you if questions arise later about a specific application that you made. Well, when should records be made? The Nebraska pesticide regulations say they must be made within 48 hours of the application. Records can be kept in any format, be it handwritten notes, typed and stored on the computer or on CDs, printouts in the filing cabinet, or other methods. The important thing is that they are kept. The necessary information to be documented includes the name and address of the person for whom the pesticide was applied and the location of the application. A description of the site where the pesticide was applied, such as in the soil around the perimeter of a house, on a baseboard, or in a cornfield. The pest or pests controlled. The starting time of the application which includes the day, month, and year that the pesticide was applied. The pesticide trade name and EPA registration number. The rate of application, the total amount of pesticide used and the area treated. The method and location of disposed pesticides, and if none was disposed, the records must say so. And the name, certification number, and address of the applicator. Other records that are recommended but not required include wind speed, wind direction, and temperature. It looks like you've done a good job with your record keeping, Cindy. Continue to keep your records for three years. This will not only keep you compliant with the regulations, but will also help you run a more successful business. Will do, thanks. You're welcome, have a good day. Special record keeping is also required for all fumigations and fumigants, and these are called fumigation management plans, or FMPs. Fumigation is used most often in grain and rodent control in Nebraska, and a written plan must be on file before conducting the fumigation. The elements of an FMP include planning facility and commodity details, such as personnel training and notification, notification of local emergency responders, sealing procedures, application procedures and fumigation periods, monitoring, and post-application operations. As with other applications, records must be kept for a minimum of three years. 
To find out more about FMPs, you can contact the Nebraska Department of Agriculture at 402-471-2394. An example of a fumigation management plan can also be found on the NDA's website. Having a pesticide regulatory program is beneficial for the state. It not only assures that people and the environment are protected from the risks pesticides can present, it also assures everyone is playing by the same rules and that pesticides continue to be available to those who wish to use them. Without regulation, there would be likely be many fewer pest control solutions available on the market today. If you have any questions about the Nebraska Pesticide Act, pesticide inspections, or the pesticide program policy, please contact the Pesticide Program or the Nebraska Department of Agriculture. Now let's turn our attention to another pesticide law and regulations you should be aware of as an applicator. A rule involving refillable and non-refillable containers is intended to ensure containers are strong and durable and that cross-contamination or other problems don't occur. Current labeling and repackaging on pesticide containers give instructions for how to clean those empty containers. Non-refillable containers must meet certain standards. Containers should be capable of 99.99% residue removal and spouts that do not glug. And three gallons or less containers will require special lids. Labels for non-refillable containers will list them as non-refillable and also contain cleaning and container disposal instructions. Refillable containers will have to meet new Department of Transportation standards and bear a DOT transport marking number. Refillables will have to be tamper resistant or have one-way valves. These changes will result in a lot of old containers being recycled. Repackagers will use containers with new standards and be required to inspect all refillable containers for damage every time they are refilled. They will identify the previous pesticide in the container, obtain and follow residue removal procedures, label the containers before refilling them, and keep records such as date of repackaging, the product name, and container serial number. In addition to container rules, Nebraska also will make minor adjustments to its secondary containment standards, covered under Title 198, in order to meet new EPA standards. Containment standards will follow existing DEQ regulations, and you can contact the Nebraska DEQ for guidance at 402-471-2186. The last thing we'd like to discuss regarding pesticide laws and regs today is how to obtain a pesticide license. You can certify in and obtain a pesticide license for one or more of the categories mentioned earlier, and a license lasts for a three-year period, expiring April 15th of the third year. It is your responsibility to recertify before your license expires and to let the NDA know of any changes in address. Recertification can be accomplished through recertification training sessions given by UNL Extension or by a variety of professional meetings or conferences. The Pesticide Education Office on UNL's East Campus provides a scheduled booklet each year with dates for training. So when is a license required? NDA requires one for all RUPs and for GUPs in structural, wood destroying, ONT, and public health if you are controlling a disease vector on behalf of a subdivision of the state. If a new applicator has just started on a job, we also allow for a once-in-a-lifetime 60-day exemption where an uncertified applicator can apply RUPs under the supervision of a certified applicator. The clock begins with the first application, and NDA must be informed within 10 days through the submission of an NDA application form. The supervisor of the uncertified applicator has the responsibility to determine the level of experience of the non-certified applicator, provide guidance for each type of pesticide application, accompany the person to each type of site, be accessible at all times, and be able to be at the pesticide application site within three hours. If you have any other questions about the 60-day rule, or other pesticide laws and regulations here in Nebraska, please contact NDA. We look forward to working with you. Thank you for listening to this program on pesticide laws and regulations. We hope it's given you a good foundation as you begin or continue your career as a pesticide applicator and about the importance of why pesticide laws, including the label, need to be followed to ensure the safety of you and your family.